Hi, this is BK from ManForWars.com, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents offline, worldwide, teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help uh, the same people worldwide locally discuss and share great online info they find offline as uh, better people making better places to live, respected patriots helping their neighbors hear different info and think for themselves, and being valuable members of your community who can connect with your neighbors and organize to resist things like this COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-1984 bad novel coronavirus, where it seems like they're overhyping this to take our rights in a giant power grab worldwide. And this seems to be done centrally because it's very coordinated by sort of world organizations pushing for a world government and global control over everyone. So we have to resist that. So, um, so that's key. Um, uh, as opposed to just talking to strangers online, which is fine, but the internet is a jumping off point for taking that information, hours of information that patriots understand and process, and then finding ways to conveniently share that uh, with meetings, they meet with other patriots, you know, become friends, share a meal, feel like acting, use meet and greet tables, uh, posters, flyers, DVDs, and so on to kind of get the word out. And you can make them small, easy to take. You can make them bigger, easy to see, whatever. And you can see the description below for how we locally beat swine flu where I lived last year. Me and my Patriot colleagues, we respected for it, even covered by the mainstream news who normally wouldn't touch the topic, but they will cover a group of people where you live doing a good job as co-signed by other people where you live. That is safe for them to cover but just getting into that stuff on their own may not be but again that's how you make it work so um <clears throat> for more on that see below but this video is called covid19 pandemic why won't trump use the army to transport farm food to stop destroying it why won't trump use the army to transport farm food to stop from destroying it you may have uh, heard some of these stories but i'm going to take you through a brief narrative when it comes to logic and my position on this and how it all makes sense and how we can all make it happen and people can make stuff like this happen everywhere in the world but especially america which we should save because america can save the world and america uh, goes down and communist china replaces it and then we're all supposed to act like them then we're all screwed so we can save the chinese people save hong kong save taiwan and save the rest of the world from that type of system which has failed before and which we, which seems to be something that that we the entire world are now adopting fast uh, and that's a problem, and that's a problem that we have to solve. Um, so, number one, when it comes to Trump, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, I didn't really like him before. I had a media impression of him as sort of a pompous billionaire. Wasn't a huge fan of The Apprentice, though I saw it a few times. Um, but then I later learned that he was a deeper guy than that. He'd written some deeper books, said some deeper stuff. So, fair enough, right? Just I didn't pay that much attention to him. But as a fan of, of him becoming uh, president as a nationalist and a patriot relative to the other options out there in America and in countries worldwide, um, and I like about 80% of what he says. So, yeah, excuse me, stray hairs. Um, there we go. I like about, uh, no allegory, stray hairs. Um, I like about 80% of what he says, right? But like any man speaking freely, about 80% is pretty good stuff. The other 20% could be, eh, but hey, that's what happens. You speak freely, right? You're not all careful and watered down and whatever. It's all, eh, you know? So, um, so I like it. And um, I like about 50% of what he does, right? About 50% of what he does. Um, done some really good things, right? Kept the U.S. out of bad international agreements, uh, renegotiating things, the art of the deal, and so on. And so socially, um, you know, we're encouraged to cheer for President Trump, right? And we're encouraged to make excuses for President Trump. Well, he's got to deal with this, swamp creatures, deep state, big corporations. Well, he's not really connecting with the patriots, people like Breitbart, Infowars, and others who are his biggest supporters. Uh, you know, he's more talking to the New York Times, CBS News, but maybe, the, and I've done it myself, right? And we say, I, I understand why he would make that decision. I think it's the wrong one. I think that he should have more independent media in the White House asking him questions along with the regular press corps. And I think he should do more interviews and connect more with the independent media um, that support his independent base, right? But he counts on his base being there and then he tries to work with or maybe charm uh, the other parties involved who are, who are more hostile to his ideas and his agenda, right? And I think that um, <clears throat> is a calculation that um that that you know he's made but i don't think it's always the right one so i want to make that clear um but we're encouraged socially you know you want to get along with other people people might even hate this video fair enough right uh, but hey now we all might die from starvation or the flu or government tyranny or depression so hey uh it's time to you know open your minds to all possibilities um but socially we're encouraged to cheer we're encouraged to make excuses for for stuff that he does that we don't like um, not defending the First Amendment, not defending free speech online, not defending, you know, against all the censorship of his fans on Facebook and other mainstream platforms um, and his base and so on. Um, 
and uh, and we're supposed to sort of uh, defend him from stupid media attacks, which are very surface, right? Media says something stupid. Uh, fans say that was so stupid and on and on and on and on and on, right? And so the narrative is kind of controlled a little bit. And, and it's time for us to break out of that narrative, especially when facing an existential crisis like what we're facing right now worldwide, right? So um, <clears throat> second point here is man up. Man up. Especially if you man up and help other men man up, then women and kids can chill out. And they can also woman up for that matter, right? With more confident men. But man up. Don't just be a cheerleader. Be a real leader right? Don't just be a cheerleader because socially on Twitter or whatever and wherever you prefer, you, you want to connect with other people or, or wherever, right? But don't just be a cheerleader. Be a real leader, right? And um, don't just attack uh, his critics, right? Figure out the right thing to do and then push him to do it. And if he does it, he's a real leader. If not, then you elect a real leader. So you're not, we're not trapped in this narrative, right? Where it's like, well, the media said something stupid. And so we said something smart about the stupid thing. It's like, this is an old trick they've used for years. Like with all the stupid people on TV shows, like Jersey Shore and so on. All these reality shows, whatever. Calling stupid people stupid is how people feel smart, right? Um, but it doesn't necessarily make you smart. It makes you stupid, right? You should be looking at smart people. You should be wasting your time on stupid people going, hey, you're so stupid, right? It can be entertaining. It can be fun. Right, but it's not necessarily the best use of our time, and it doesn't necessarily improve us as people. So we got to be careful about that, right? So, um, so yeah, that's my advice: is to say, yeah, you know, be a real leader. Don't just be a cheerleader, right? And figure out the right things to do. People like Ann Coulter did this, and Trump got mad at Ann Coulter. But Ann Coulter, who I respect, right, and she can speak much more freely as a pundit and an author, uh, you know, and and a, and, a, and a writer, a columnist than Trump can in terms of his actions. She can be like, this is ideal. Here it is. I wrote it down. Trump can be like, okay, but I got to work with the military industrial complex. I got to work with big pharma. I got to work with these corporations. I got to make a deal with China. Don't want to go to war with China, but want to win our trade war with China. I got to work with all the deep state people around me, you know, whatever, right? But, but even so, Ann Coulter will say, yeah, but you don't have to hire this person for the head of Homeland Security. You don't have to hire this person to be in your White House. You can get this other person who's a veteran patriot, who's qualified, smart, right? So you're making some of the wrong choices, right? And that's really important to figure out, right? Why is Trump choosing certain bad people for certain bad positions? Why hasn't he fired Fauci and Burks yet when their ties to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and World Health Organization have been exposed and the mainstream, the, the independent media has made a big stink about it, right? Why, why, why hasn't he um, spoken up about a lot of the corruption that his base knows about, right? That people like Q fans talk about, right? And say, well, this riddle means that he, he might be alluding to it. And we want to believe that these, you know, it's like, well, what, you know, it's, it's sure, maybe, right? But, but you need to push him to do that. Push him to do the right things, right? Don't just say, we're your base. We're happy for you. Right? Even the rallies got 20,000 people at a rally, right? I've watched a few, right? And they're entertaining and they're good, but they can be repetitive. So I stopped. And I'm wondering, why aren't you saying more? You got 20,000 people there. You know the media. You go on fake news. Those people over there, fake news. You know, it's like, yeah, sure. But you can reveal more with your bully pulpit than you currently do. And for fans out there, if you don't believe he's fake, then you need to push him to. If you push him to and he won't, and you find then you find out he's fake, then you need to find somebody else to support uh, or you need to make him not be fake and make him do the right things. When you push the right things to do, you don't just talk about what's going on in, in, in the way that we're socially encouraged to do, right? So that's important. Um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to this specific um, food issue, right? Trump has used the army recently, the army recently, to help people like New York Governor uh, Cuomo, right? New York Governor Cuomo was like, oh my God, we're going to get uh, tons of deaths with this coronavirus crisis. Oh my God, we're not going to be able to handle it. Federal government, do your job. We have people dying here. Trump, please help us out. We have people dying here, right? So Trump was like, okay, Mayor Cu or Governor Cuomo, you know, I know we don't, usually don't like each other, but we're all trying to rally together as a country around when it comes to this coronavirus crisis, right? So no problem. We'll send the Army Corps of Engineers to build you a new hospital practically or a whole bunch more hospital beds. We'll send the Navy over to uh, to have uh, ships waiting for all the corona cases that we need to quarantine. People who are super sick and we're going to make other people super sick. And we'll send you tons of ventilators, right? We're going to make more ventilators. We're going to get auto manufacturers to switch from making cars to making ventilators, right? And it turns out they didn't need all that shit. They didn't need 
beds, they didn't need the ships for quarantine, and they didn't need the ventilators. And when they used the ventilators, as a New York doctor has said, whistleblowing, we actually used ventilators to kill people because we misdiagnosed the disease. Doctors sometimes don't look into kind of the math behind the treatment. They kind of say, this is the official treatment. Okay, put the ventilator on them. They're kind of sick, they got the flu. And the ventilator pumps too much pressure into their lungs and their fragile lungs from their illness rattle to death and they die, right? So they've actually killed people using ventilators wrongly if they should even use them at all, right? So, so my point in saying all that is that Trump has used the army when it comes to this, um, this crisis, right? And, um, and, and so it's not unusual to involve the Army, the Army Corps of Engineers, the National Guard, and so on. And if Trump fans and his base push him to do that, then you can deal with uh, what's going on today much easier, right? So this gets to uh, the farmers, right? Why not send the Army to go get food instead of farmers destroying the food due to the lack of demand, right? Lack of demand, lack of transportation, restaurants closed, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, only big box stores open, right? in the sort of big box communism that's taken over the world where Walmart's essential, but mom and pops are not, you know, uh, politicians are essential, but you and I are not, right? Like this is, this is bullshit, right? So we got to fight against this, right? But farmers, you know, they've got it tough because they've got, they're still making, you know, uh, they're still growing stuff and they can't just let all that stuff rot right? Because that'll just cause more problems and attract more bugs and diseases and so on. So, so they destroy it. They're destroying tons of food, tons of squash, tons of cabbage, tons of potatoes, tons of whatever. They're destroying it, right? Or milk. They're, they're taking a bunch of milk and they're flushing it down uh, the drain, right? Because you can't, if, the, if the, you don't milk the cows, then the, the cow's udders explode, the cows die. So you got to milk the cows, but then nowhere for the milk to go. So they got to flush it down the drain, right? And these farmers, American farmers, and America, Trump's talking about the great farmers. The farmers are so great. They're great farmers. You know, we do everything we can for the farmers. It's, well, do this, right? Um, and so, um, so due to the lack of demand, um, they're they're having an issue. So what Trump can do is Trump can pay for it. He can he can he can get the government money to pay for it for just fair market rates, and say, hey, we're here with the Army Corps of Engineers, the National Guard, with our transportation, with our shipping, with our giant planes that can, you know, uh, carry tons of missiles overseas to bomb Afghanistan or wherever the hell we feel like it. Um, and, and so we're going to use tons of planes and trucks and tractors. They can transport people, equipment, and so on, right? We can use those to, 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 to take your food and we can distribute it to different parts of the country. And then people in different cities and different states and so on, communities can organize to kind of distribute, you know, the food. You can get people working, you know, to, to sort of distribute and organize food where they live and say, okay, we all have enough here to sort of survive for the next few weeks and then we can get past this and reopen and grand closing, grand reopening. Fantastic, right? Um, and, 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 and you can pay for it. Right. Like with the bailouts given to Wall Street. Right. The bailouts given to big hedge fund companies and so on. Right. You can pay for it. You can say to the farmers, here you go. How much is a bag of potatoes? Well, we usually get two bucks for it. They sell it for six bucks in the store. So great. Here's two bucks. You know, whatever. Right. Um, the milk. Same thing. Whatever. You can actually you can actually use the bailout money to give it literally directly to the farmers. So they're sort of making what they were making before. They stay in business, they survive. And then as America recovers from this crisis, um, they are not weakened and destroyed and, 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 and their operations shut down um, to the point where they can't recover fast enough to sort of get back into the swing of things and help with the recovery, including feeding people, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's my point. Keep them open for business. And this is not something that's hard to do. So I do hope uh, Trump fans consider that and other ideas when it comes to figuring out the right things to do and making sure that he knows and does them too. And uh, there you have it. So BK for manforwars.com. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, answers to work together, financial support. See the links below uh, for more of what we can do when it comes to connecting with our neighbors and beating this pandemic scare, just like we beat swine flu the last time locally where I live with me and my Patriot colleagues. Otherwise, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.